and gentlemen, my name is Fernando Corral, and in the summer of 2014, I had both the honor and privilege of working under the mentorship of Dr. Roger Armand at Thomas Jefferson University in the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences. Before I delve into the specifics of my research, I would like to go over some background information so that you may better understand my research. Cancer is a devastating disease that affects many Americans today. Cancer is defined as the uncontrolled growth of cells due to its inability to undergo apoptosis. Its causes may vary, however, contributing factors include unhealthy lifestyle and genetics. There are two types of cancer, benign and malignant. Benign cancers are considered, considered harmless, while malignant ones are considered harmful. This is because malignant cancers can, uh, can metastasize, meaning they can spread throughout the rest of the body. The prostate is an important organ to the male reproductive system. It is about the size of a walnut and is located between the bladder and the rectum. It's a hormone gland that secretes alkaline fluid, which then becomes part of semen, which is used to neutralize the vaginal tract in order to prolong sperm life and increase motility. Thus, a disease like prostate cancer that affects one in seven men, mostly of older age, can be devastating to the reproductive system. Some of its symptoms include erectile dysfunction and urinary dysfunction. Prostate cancer can be categorized in four different stages. T1, where the cancer is very small and can barely, it's barely noticed. T2 is large enough to be noticed. And T3, most of the organ has been overcome by the cancer. By the T4 stage, the cancer has metastasized. G protein receptor kinase 5 is a catalyzed protein that phosphorylates a substrate. Our lab's interest is in the phosphorylation of non-classical substrates, specifically P P53. When GRK5 phosphorylates the P53 ligand, P53 degradation occurs, and this thus inhibits P53-dependent apoptosis. Now for my research design. The purpose of my research was to better understand GRK5 and its inhibition with small molecule drugs by performing different experiments to understand mole how molecules bind to GRK5. Our secondary purpose was to identify novel inhibitors of GRK5 and the diff with different chemical scaffolds. We had hypothesized that we could use molecular modeling to identify compounds that are better able to bind to GRK5 and verify them experimentally. The first method that we used was molecular modeling. We used a computer cluster to build 3D models of the GRK5 crystal structure and this, of the small molecule drugs. The computer then docked these drugs onto the crystal onto the GRK5 structure, uh, predicted, predict, predicted the geometries, and calculated the free binding energies, which would allow for us to identify possible drug targets for GRK5. The second method we used is surface plasmon resonance. In surface plasma resonance, we, we take a CM5 chip and we immobilize, our, we immobilize the GRK5 protein on the chip, which is then placed inside of the SPR instrument, which measures response by injecting the molecule onto the chip and shining a light through a prism on it and, and using the light to measure the volume as it runs through the chip. The first step in our method was to perform the molecular modeling. We used this to identify the compounds that we were going to experimentally test. And then we ordered these compounds and prepared their concentrations. We prepared a plate and ran the SPR experiment. With this, we collected the data and identified the compounds with the best binding. We performed a serial dilution on them and ran an SPR experiment. Here are a list of my materials. Please take a moment to look over them. Now to my results. Here are my initial SPR results. They are at 25 micromolar, and the graph represents the injection onto the chip. In the first part of the graph, we have the injection. This is, when the injection starts, there's a large increase in response. During the second part, we call this the binding phase, because when the three minute injection starts, we see a, a slow increase in the slope. When we see a slow increase in slope, this tells us that this, can make, this allows for us to infer that our molecule is binding to our protein. During the dissociation phase, the three-minute the three injection is ending. And if we see a slope during this period, this tells us that, the, that, this, that this compound has a longer off rate. 
And the best, our best drug targets have longer off rates because they, re they have better retention with our protein. The molecule in this graph is starosporin. Starosporin is a known GRK5 inhibitor. However, it is poisonous to the human body and cannot be used as a drug. Thus, we use it as a reference to compare our unknown inhibitors to known ones. The molecules Z6, Z9, and Z10, these are pseudonyms for the actual uh, molecules, were not found, we found that they didn't bind to them because their data was mostly flat and don't show promising results. However, Z3, Z5, and Z22 have very, they have very good uh, slopes and, they, and some of them show a good retention at the end. We performed a serial dilution on all three of these compounds and we found that Z3 has, a ve has very good retention. However, its rise in the beginning is very slow and however, we would like to do further research onto this drug. Z5 ha easily binds to GRK5 because we see that in, as the injection begins, there's a very high rise, but the, its retention is, is very poor. Z22 is our best result because it, it also rises very quickly, but it also has very good retention. Now onto my discussion. We had hypothesized that we could use molecular modeling to identify compounds that are able to bind to GRK5 and verify them experimentally. This was accepted because we were able to use molecular modeling and by verifying, them, by verifying these molecules experimentally, we were able to find uh, molecules like Z22 that we could perform different experiments later to find out if it's a possible inhibitor for GRK5. In future research, we would like to further verify our hits by performing a differential scan scanning fluorimetry assay and also a phosphorylation radioactivity assay to make sure that the, these molecules are not only binding to our proteins, but that they're also inhibiting activity. Here, here are my acknowledgments. Thank you. Any questions, comments, or constructive criticism? Thank you.